Have we finally cracked the magic formula and created a weight loss pill? Let's take a look. Hi everybody, Mark Green here, the Diabetes Diet Guy, talking all things diabetes and healthy living. This video is quite an important one because a lot of patients will be more, or hopefully, quite interested in hearing this. It's about a medication that is fairly new to market. It's not brand new, but there's not been a huge uptake of it actually in practice yet, and probably not many people that are familiar with it. It's also, I wanted to do this video off the back of a news article that I was reading that was kind of talking about this. And so if anyone had seen that, I just wanted to clarify some things because as we know in the media, things can be distorted. So this video is all about a weight loss pill that is now available on prescription for treating diabetes. Now I should emphasize as we go through this video, all the medications we're talking about are primarily for type two diabetes management, but they do have other benefits which we will talk about. Now a weight loss pill for a lot of people is gonna be very appealing. So what are we talking about? The pill in question is called Ribelsus. And Ribelsus is a medication that is, or a medication class that is already used in the management of type two diabetes. And they are called GLP-1 agonists. I've done videos on this class of medications. If you're watching on YouTube, you can scroll down and take a look. I can also link to it at the end of this video. Um, or if you're watching on the blog, at diabetesdietguide.com, go to the medication section, it's all in there. As a quick summary, these medications are just a hormone that your body already produces. And this hormone fills you up, so it makes you feel fuller for longer. It's a satiety hormone. So the effect of this class of medications helps to, one, reduce the blood sugars after eating. It takes the edge off because it slows down the absorption of food, which is what this hormone helps to do. And the other thing is it makes you feel fuller for longer and therefore it has great weight loss effects. Now, typically, these medications are in an injectable format. And over the years, they've come a long way. So initially they started off as a twice daily injection to get the sufficient dose in order to have its effect. Then it went down to once daily. And now it's got to the point where we're taking these once a week and still and getting better results than what we previously did. So it's really coming on and it's an area of development. In fact, we've recently done a very popular video on one of these classes of medications called Tazepatide, where on average patients are losing 52 pounds. That's on average. I'll link to it at the end of the video if you want to take a look and check it out. But this is exploding, guys. This is a really exciting area to be um, involved with, and patients are getting really good results with them. Now, the difference with ribelsus is rather than being an injectable therapy like all the others, it's an oral tablet. So for any patient that does not like to take injections, although as far as injections go, these are pretty mild, but some people have such uh, needle phobia, it doesn't matter. They just don't want to take the injection. So this is offering up a whole new world of opportunities in terms of managing diabetes and weight loss results for patients who can take it orally. Fantastic. Now, Ribelsus is actually a type of GLP-1 that is already on the market. It's called a Zempic or Semaglutide or Semaglutide, depends on the pronunciation. So you might already be on this medication or you may have heard of it. So they just packaged it into a tablet, which means you can take it. Now, because of the way the pharmacokinetics work, you'll find that the doses of the injectables are always much lower compared to a oral tablet. So with any of these medications, what you find is they tend to be titrated up over a period of a few months, typically over three months. So you start with a small dose and work your way up. The reason is it gives your body time to adapt because with these medications, if you go in too heavy, you can find that patients have adverse side effects. They can feel quite bloated, quite nauseous. Um, and in some severe instances, if you go too quick, um, diarrhea and vomiting, which would be an indication to stop. But if you take your time with it, most people are absolutely fine. Although some people do find they are symptomatic with it. So all sounds good. So far, so good, right? And truth be told, it is. But the key question is, because there are other alternatives on the market that are injectable, are, is ribelsus as effective as the alternatives? Because if it isn't, there's not a great deal or there's not much point in taking this if it's going to be ineffective compared to the alternatives on the market, even if it is oral. Well, first things first, let's start with glucose lowering effect. So we measure this with the HbA1c test, which is an average glucose level over the last three months. 
So they've looked at this and they've also compared it against other medications. So I'm just gonna pull up a graphic on the screen and some screenshots that I've taken just to take you through what I'm about to say. So the first thing is that when they compared ribalsis against other forms of medications, it's blowing them out of the water in terms of HbA1c lowering effect. So that's terrific. I'm not gonna dwell on that point too much because what I really wanna do and spend the time in this video is comparing it to the other GLP-1 agonists. So we're just gonna pull up another, um, another graphic here. So the first comparison is comparing ribelsis against Victoza or liraglutide, liraglutide, which is the first or one of the first GLP-1 agonists that you could take daily. So this one's still quite widely used, but it has starting to be phased out as newer ones have come to the market. Different doses for liraglutide, the max dose tends to be 1.8 milligrams, which is what they've compared against. Now the HbA1c drop for a 1.0 milligram dose for liraglutide is 1.1%, which is roughly around 12, 13 millimoles per mole, depending on which um, units you're using. So when I say 1.1%, I'm doing this in HbA1c scores. It's not 1% overall, it's 1.1% on your HbA1, HbA1c score. So it's quite significant. Ribelsis, on the other hand, managed to drop it between 1.2 and 1.3%. So actually the oral form was more significant than one of the, well, I suppose, older GLP-1 agonists. Furthermore, one of the great things was is that 68% of patients at 26 weeks achieved a HbA1c under 7%, which basically means it's in target. If you're in the UK units, that means your HbA1c is going to be somewhere between 48 and 53 millimoles per mole, which is where we want it to be. This is compared to people that didn't take the pill, which we call the control group, and only 14% of people achieved it. So now let's compare to a couple more of the big dogs. So we have two types. We have dulaglutide, which is a different type of GLP-1. It's produced by a different company. And we also have semaglutide, which is the injectable format of this medication. We have two different doses. Again, you can see it on the screen. So we have dulaglutide, which gives you a 0.75 milligram dose and a 1.5 milligram dose, although there are other doses available, which we'll touch on later. And the semaglutide, which is 0.5 milligrams up to one milligram. Now, as you can see, actually the semaglutide one milligram injection gives you the lowest HbA, or the biggest, sorry, I should say, the biggest HbA1c drop of 1.6%. This is closely followed by the 0.5 milligrams of semaglutide, and then gelaglutide tends to be between 1.1 and 1.3% drop in HbA1c, depending on the dose you give. Now, keep in mind, Rebelsis at 14 milligrams reduced the HbA1c by 1.3%. So the daily pill outperforms one of the other GLP-1 agonists, but it's not as good as the injectable version of this medication. So that's the blood glucose results, but let's get to the headlines, the weight loss. Tends to be the one everyone's interested in, so let's take a look. I'm gonna pull up another graph on the screen here so you can see as I'm talking. So we're looking at the reduction in pounds. As you can see, the average weight for these individuals when they were starting these trials were just over 200 pounds. So these individuals aren't, for lack of better expression, which seems to be something I always say in these videos, I uh, don't, don't know another way of saying it, not huge, um, but overweight more than likely because an indication to go onto this medication in the first place is that your BMI is over a certain number, usually falling into the overweight or obese category. So once again, we can see semaglutide is king. At one milligram, patients lost on average 12.8 pounds. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is the gelaglutide has increased doses for weight loss specifically at three milligrams and 4.5 milligrams. And this is still not as good as semaglutide. So the highest dose of gelaglutide has a 10.4 pound weight loss on average. So how does this compare to ribelsis? On average, patients lost eight pounds taking the 14 milligram dose. An important point to point out though, is this also compared against a control group who were also following a lifestyle and healthy living regime and they managed to lose three pounds on average. So the ribelsis achieved a five pound weight loss over and above the control group. And I think we'll leave it there guys. So just to sum up, it looks like a really good option for people that would prefer to take the oral tablet or are needle phobic. It has good benefits. It actually outperforms some of the other options on the market. 
and it just adds to this already very exciting and robust medication class. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps us out and gets us up the YouTube algorithm. If you need an extra helping hand getting on top of your lifestyle change or your diabetes, head over to diabetesdietguide.com where we have a bunch of free information at your disposal and also offer consultancy services where we'll work with you one-to-one -one and help you get to the place that you wanna be with your health. We'll see you later.